What's up guys, welcome back to Barfly Freeport. Today we are going to be, well, originally this was going to be the part two of the reverse dry shake uh, episode, but now I think it's actually more of a redo, right? It's kind of a redo because we're kind of gonna do this whole test all over again. So we, when we posted that, um, uh, we got a lot of comments about the reverse dry shake that I do being kind of out of whack a little bit, right? Or, or, or for lack of a better term, it was wrong, right? So uh, I had put the egg in with all of the other ingredients and the ice and then shaken it. And then somebody was like, wait a minute, uh, isn't the egg supposed to go in after you extract the ice? So I said, okay, that's a fair comment. Then a couple of people were saying that the reason why I got those big bubbles in the last one was that uh, I didn't strain through a Hawthorne strainer, right? Um, and that would break up the bubbles, right? And then another person said, not only do you have to strain it through a Hawthorne strainer, you also have to strain it through a fine strainer. That's how you get rid of all the bubbles. I initially, I didn't want to strain it through a, a fine strainer because the fine strainer is inevitably going to catch some of the foam. And I wanted the reverse dry shake to have the best possible chance at having the most foam as it could. But now we're going to see if it kind of breaks up the bubbles. So this is what we're going to do in this episode. We're going to do my regular, we're going to do my regular, though just the way that I make a whiskey sour normally, okay? Just a regular shake. Then we're going to do the reverse dry shake exactly as I did it in the last video, where I put the egg in at the wrong time or whatever. Um, and then we're going to do this one where we put the egg in afterward, right? So we're going to shake it with ice, then we're going to extract the ice, then put the egg in. Okay. And then for this one, I guess we will do that same, Marius, should we do the same egg in after for these other two tests? That's the thing. That's one variable that's kind of tripping me up and someone's going to, someone's, you know, here's the thing. Our pseudoscience episodes, although I don't really consider this technically Not a pseudoscience, but our pseudoscience episodes, we've made some mistakes. We've gotten called out for some pretty fair things in the last few episodes. So we're really trying to be pretty accurate with this. So the question is, if I do this just regular and then I do this the, with the egg in at the wrong time and then I do this with the egg in at the right time, do I do the egg in at the right time well, for these two as well? Let's see what happens if, if the egg in at the quote unquote right time makes a big difference, then let's do that for the rest. I mean, here's the thing. People are going to say, ah, it doesn't really matter because this one's going to be a lot older than this one and that this one's been able to sit for longer. So you're not going to be able to tell because this one's going to be done first, right? I don't really think that that time really matters. I'm a, I really want to try and get these done in quick succession though, so that there's less time in between each cocktail, as little time in between each cocktail as possible. And we can try and show images of early. Ones yes. I mean, honestly, I think that you should take a close up shot of each one, either as it's being poured or just like straight away after it is done. And then we can even maybe do just like a layout of all of them from when they were just poured or something. And then when they've been sitting for a while or something so that we can kind of yeah. mitigate that. So people can see what it looks like at least exactly like Ex right after it was poured and then like five minutes after it was poured or something. But I want to try, I don't want to have a lot of time in between. And so what I'm telling you guys at home, watching at home is that I'm really going to try and do this very fast, even though we're going to edit out some of the, you know, less interesting bits and it's going to be, you know, chopped up. I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm not putting a lot of time in between each cocktail. That being said, making five whiskey sours is really going to test my bartender metal because it's been a long time since I've had to do this. Um, and I have to make them each separately because uh, I can't I can't like batch two in here because of the different the different techniques that we're trying here. All right, I think that's enough talking. Let's do it. All right. Oh, and we're gonna do the bitters test as well. On top of it all. All right. Let's juice our lemon. Wait, should we? Maybe we should just juice a bunch of lemon juice so we don't have to juice the lemon every time, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's a good call. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. We could do that for sure. Let me get a vessel to hold the lemon. I guess I'll just put it in a big old fashioned glass. Yeah, or that plastic thing with the pour spout. What plastic thing with the pour spout? I don't know, whatever that is. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, why not? This guy, yeah, this is the, uh, that's for the hand blender. Yeah, that's good. Then we'll actually see how much we juice as well.
Let's not forget the simple setup. Okay, let's do it. So first one up is a regular dry shake. Um, now here's the deal though. You know what? I mean, we're gonna find out pretty shortly anyway, and we're gonna waste a ton of whiskey, but you know what I found out? I was watching a episode of that My Greatest Dishes on Amazon. And these are some of the top chefs in the world, okay? These are the these are the chefs that influence the other chefs. And three out of five episodes, they were cracking their eggs on the side of the on the side of a bowl, just FYI, for all you flat crackers out there. Just uh, I just wanted to point that out. At least some of the top chefs in England. Yes, some of the chop chefs in England. That's true. Let's let's be. It's not the chop, but they are some. Of, they are some of the just because they live just because they live in England because not all of them are English. You know, there's a Jamaican dude in there. Um, be, just because they live in England doesn't mean that they're not some of the top chefs in the world. No, it just means but, they live in England and they and they are and they and they own English restaurants. They made their careers in England. All right, here we go. So regular dry shake. All right, I just wanna say that Marius is timing me behind the camera, so he's giving me a little cue when I've hit 30 seconds. Uh, I think that we should do a little bit less for ice. I don't usually shake with ice for 30 seconds, maybe 20, but 20 seconds for the ice. Ready? One, two, and go. <laughs> ah, this is gonna kill my arm. This, you know, this, this test is this is this is punishment. So, try not to hold any volume back. There you go. All right, that's number one. I'm gonna do the next one real fast. All right, so the next one is gonna be reverse dry shake the way that I did it before with the egg in it, right? Yep. Tempting fate here doing this all in the same tin. If I mess this up, it's a waste. The whole thing is a waste. Okay. Shake this for 30 seconds, right? And then without, si and then without ice for 20, right? All right, ready? Uh, yep, go. Well, I guess this is 20. Huh? This is 20. Oh, because it's with ice? Yep. Oh, and then without ice. Yeah, that's right. This is 20. All right. I mean, that was... A little bit less, one second less. Oh, well. They'll have to forgive me for that. Um, Invalid test results. So this is the way that I did it before, where a couple of people said that's not the way to do it. All right, and then we're gonna, ready? Uh, Get my timer set. Yeah. Okay. And, One, two, and go. Go. Oh, my arms are, are getting tired. <laughs> this cocktail is like the rotator cuff killer. Yeah. 
This produced so much volume, I'm not gonna be able to fit it all in the glass. These are the biggest coops I have. I don't have nine ounce coops. So uh, truth be told, there is a little bit that I had to reserve so, back. You definitely get more foam, that's for sure. Yeah, you get more foam and that foam was, you know, we just repeated the test. It's a lot fluffier. Uh, it's not as dense and it's not as silky as the other's foam. It looks really silky from here, but. You still get that major, those major big bubbles. I gotta say the bubbles in this one are a little smaller than last time we did it though. Yeah. To be fair, to be fair. All right, next one. So now we're doing shaking the cocktail with a with ice, which actually, honestly, it, this doesn't actually, ha I'm gonna do it with a big rock of ice to keep things consistent, but to tell you the truth, this doesn't need to be a big rock of ice because if you're extracting the ice, it doesn't really matter, you know? Like the big rock of ice, in this one is there to make the uh, foam more fluffy uh, without adding a ton of, uh, of of dilution. But I guess for the sake of- Consistency, we need well, to Well, consistency same. we have to do it, but then also for the sake of, um, for the sake of like being easily extracting the ice, because who's gonna sit there and pick tons of little pieces of ice out of there? I mean, if that's the case, if that's what you're planning on doing, maybe for home use, but for bartending, no way. That's gonna take way too much time. Uh, but we're gonna just do this very consistently across the board. Uh, three quarters of an ounce. This is, we're gonna use half a bottle of bourbon doing this. Someone's gonna say, well, the ice isn't the same size. It's roughly the same size. Maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit smaller. Too many variables, guys, too many variables, all right? So this one's what, uh, 20 seconds, right? And then 10 seconds for the, uh, so this is shaking the cocktail with no egg white and then adding the egg white afterward. Ready? One, two, and. You want me to do one more? Yeah. All right. Just to make up the difference. Because I'm, I'm putting up a finger so that mm. I get ready and then I'll let you know. When okay, I'm... okay. All right, get rid of the ice. Well, I like to do this in the other tin so I don't mess it up, but I guess I'm gonna have to just combine it. I've been having such good luck with this egg as I feel like it's gonna run out. All right, 30 seconds, here we go. One, two, and go. Come on. <laughs> 15 more seconds, let's do it, come on. You can do it. 10 more <laughs> seconds, <laughs> don't stop, come on. Shake it, shake it. Five more. Don't give up I need now, to go to the you're hospital. almost there. <laughs> Check one and go. Stop. Oh, my arms are killing me. All right. So this is egg added after. I gotta say, this is fascinating. Also a little too much volume. Um, I'll try and get as much of it in there as possible, but I don't wanna, this one probably got the most foam. But like, so this one where the egg was added, you get the most foam, but not, not that much. I mean, it has sunken down a little bit on the second one. There. I'm also tripping out by like, these are all identical, but this is paler in color, which I find interesting. All right, so the next one is a reverse dry shake strained through a Hawthorne strainer, all right? That's the difference between that and that. Three quarters of an ounce. If you guys don't know how to make a whiskey sour after this video, I don't know what to tell you. Two ounces of the old whisker. Even I know how to make a whiskey sour. All right, so are we adding the ice in and the egg after now? Uh, Is it that, like a progression? Yeah, it's well, a progression, it, right? So we should add the ice in. Because it seems like. And we should add the egg. So we egg, should do a progression from that. Yeah, the egg after did 
produce, produce more. a fluffier, right. Yeah, it, so it, it, it produced a fluffier quality foam yeah. and a little bit more, but just a hair more, just a hair more than either of these. These ones are I mean, very comparable though, yeah. I gotta say. Well, that's, they've sunk down a little bit, I think, from peak, but yeah. Well, that's what all foam kind of does, right. but where it settles out also matters, I would think. Right? Where it settles out also matters. I mean, unless you want this big fluffy foam. But the thing is, is that this is what I don't get about the, the, the appeal of this technique. Everyone complains about foam in their beer, even though the foam is where the aroma is carried in the beer. You actually want a little bit of foam on the top of your beer, so you get the aroma of the beer. Everyone complains about a foamy beer. Oh, really? But yet they want a foamy cocktail? This doesn't make any sense to me. A lot of people in the comments though of the last video were like, oh, who wants more foam? So there are some people who are kind of into that. Um, that said, like, I think we have proven that the reverse dry shake does give you a foamier cocktail, but it is a different foam. Yeah, all right, this is with ice? Yep. Okay, one, two, and go. So the ice is a little bit bigger than the last ice maybe? It's getting stuck in the tin. I'm not sure if ice size really matters that much. It might a little. It would matter if there was something in here. That's for sure. It's how you use it, huh? <laughs> ah, it's done. Okay. Woo! That was. It's getting harder and harder. But all right, here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. Take the ice out. Crack our egg in our tinner. Oh, this is the big one. All right, get ready. That's the big one, ready? You need to stretch before? All right. All right. All right. One, two, and go. <laughs> this is killing me, Larry. It's killing me. <laughs> I think that when I said this is killing me, Larry, I think that's from a Burlington Coat Factory no, commercial. No, it's a... It's a it's a mattress. Oh, it's a mattress. He's like, you're killing. He's like, I'll slash the prices. You're killing me, Larry. It's not mattress time yet. Come on, one more, five more, four more seconds. Ah, oh, Jesus. Why did I say we should redo this video? Okay, now we're gonna just be. This is the Hawthorne strainer. I'm gonna close the gate, meaning I'm gonna do that, and then see if we get a uh, a uh, silkier foam. That looks like it, maybe. Got uh, it got silkier foam. I had my doubts. I really did. I really didn't think that that was gonna work. It's looking now that it's settling pretty comparable, and they all look about the same. So, is the reverse dry shake better? Maybe like in the first two minutes of the drink, it's better, right? Yeah. I mean, or like more foamy. I don't know if it, still like, get more foam though. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna have to taste. I think maybe. This is a silky foam and it's actually, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a it pretty looks. damn silky foam and that's pretty damn silky foam too. So, I mean, this is comparable to the first one for sure. Last one. Ready? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the egg after, yeah. Egg after, yeah. Hold on. Ready? Yep. One, two, and go. Last one, Leandro, psych it up. <laughs> oh, 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 let's do some big stretches, big stretches. Oh, man. Oh, oh, all right, let's go. Last one. Whew. No pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a great movie, by the way. Well, I'll have to watch it. Ready? Let's go. Isn't that a movie? It's... No pain, no gain? 
I don't, maybe, yeah. I mean, it's probably a movie. But now that you don't know if it's a movie, how did you? I think that's the you just recommended the, a movie you the, can't the, even remember the, the title Mark, of. The, the Michael Bay movie with Marky Mark and The Rock and stuff, right? Isn't it No Pain called? I don't no think so. No I don't think it's called No Pain No Gain. Can we right. do the shake? One, two, and uh, what? Oh, one, two, and go. Is it called? Maybe it's called. No, maybe you're right. Maybe it is No Pain No Gain. I don't know. No, because it's Pain and Gain, maybe. Oh, Pain and Gain or something? I don't mm. know. I'm not really. I don't know. I like The Rock a lot, but I like him uh, post ballers. Like, uh, I haven't watched a lot of his action stuff. No, oh, the Gridiron is, Gang was really good. This is not action. This is a true crime story comedy of some bodybuilders oh. that did like kidnapping scheme <laughs> oh, no, in wait, South wait. Florida. And it's, obviously, I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. Oh, what's up? Oh, I, I, I probably overshook now. Two seconds. Yeah. Okay, two second overshake. Keep that in mind. I'm telling you right now that if that got silkier foam with just that, I feel like this is going to, it's going to inhibit the foam, but it, if that worked, then this is going to get even silkier foam. I mean, that's pretty silky. And how, and that's how, pretty silky. How much foam do you have left? You probably have a lot of drink. Left. No, about an ounce. Same as the other ones. I just need a bigger, you know, I need a one ounce bigger glass, dude. Pretty damn silky. So there you go. All the sours. Uh, all right, let's let's talk about takeaways here on this on this video. So, the takeaways are that every single person that commented was totally right. Um, you do get a silkier foam out of uh, doing it with a Hawthorne strainer, and you do get a silkier foam double straining with a fine strainer. Uh, they are comparable. These three are comparable. These ones, look at how the foam settled, real bubbly. All right, bitters test. I don't know. The bitters was more condensed here than here, which is interesting. Although the bitters kind of fell through this one a little bit, which is also interesting. I gotta say though, here's my question, right? This button, th remember this one's been sitting the, the whole first time, one, yeah. sitting longer. So that could be a factor that- That could be a up. factor, yeah. It could tighten up. You're right, you're absolutely right. This has been sitting longer. No, but here's my question here. So I guess the bitters test isn't really, I mean, we could tell you right now that the bitter sucks in these. So a, re a regular reverse dry shake Mm -hmm. So this is with the egg added uh, with the ice, mm -hmm. and this is the egg added after the ice. They are identical. Makes no difference. Yeah. It makes absolutely no difference when you put the egg in. Um, they are the ones that are uh, that are free poured. So you absolutely have to strain a reverse dry shake through a Hawthorne strainer for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. You got to because you get the nice foam. The question is this: Here, I'm gonna push these forward. If these two are comparable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although it's still tripping me out why this one's so much paler than that one. Wait, they have the same amount of whiskey, but yeah. this one's a lot paler than that for some reason. I don't know why. They're put identical. Them, just put them together so it's not like the lights. So okay, I'm sorry. Sure that's not... No, no, no. Yeah, it's paler. It's different. definitely paler. This one is the palest one out of all or, of them or, for some odd reason. I don't know if it's more dilution that would do that. I don't know. It's weird. Or, or the other ones are more clear. There's less... No, no, There's no, no. It's, it's just it's just pale. I it's know, just a little paler. This is a little golder in color. It's a little paler in color. Yeah, the, it may pale. could be the egg white. Maybe yeah, they, they're, it's paler, but that could be that there's more like egg white dissolved in the liquid, suspended Possibly. in liquid. Or okay, but here's what I'm saying. Okay, let, let, should I taste it and see if they're comparable in taste? Yeah, same taste. Okay, so here, tastes like a whiskey sour. Yes, they are. Comparable in taste. Um, here's my thing. If this one, which is the regular dry shake, and this one are comparable, mm -hmm. um, then this one has an extra Ounce? step. It has an extra step Ounce. in the creation of it, right? You have to extract the ice, right? So it's an extra step. Also has more- What's the point? Volume. Because of the extra foam. Because of the extra foam, yeah. Yeah, I guess it kind of like the extra foam kind of gave it more volume, yeah. I will also say that the foam here, if you look, it's a little bit more stable. So I will say, yeah, you get me, you you get a little bit better foam with the reverse dry shake, which is 
I have been touting that the reverse dry shake is a myth this whole entire time, really. I mean, like, really is. But I, I must say that the takeaway from this is that I have been corrected. You do get a bit better, more stable foam with the reverse dry shake. Mm -hmm. And for home bartenders, that's great. But I don't think that the difference here is enough yeah. that if you're in a busy bar and someone asks you to make a whiskey sour and that bar puts egg white in their whiskey sour, and that's the way you need to make it, that you should actually add that extra step. It's going to make your life miserable when you're working. And, so and is it for really a home bartender, this is perfect. And it, 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 you do get very good foam. You do, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, and we touched on the the uh, color of the drink, but isn't, is the foam on the on your shake darker, more yellow than the... It might be. I mean, it could just be, it could just be an inconsistency in the color. Yeah. I mean, egg white, probably varies in color. It's not totally clear. It's like kind of a goldish sort of color and it could very well vary in color. That could be it. I don't, there could, there's no variation in the, in the, in the lemon because we juiced all the same lemons and put it in this. So that's consistent. The simple syrup is consistent. Uh, the whiskey is consistent. So the only thing that's inconsistent, right? That's left to a variable is since we're using all the same amounts are uh, there might might be uh, a little bit less dilution in the. No, I don't know. The dilution's probably the same because we use rocks of ice for everything. So I'm not really sure. It's probably an inconsistency in the egg yolk. I mean, in the egg white. Maybe a little yolk. No, there's just no way that yolk got in here because I made sure that there no there, that no yolk got in there. So I, I'm not really sure. But it definitely. I mean, the only variable in here that's not completely controlled by, you know, inconsistency is the egg is the egg white, which is natural and you can't. So you know, whatever. I don't know, maybe somebody in the comments will, undoubtedly somebody's gonna go in the comments and be like, ah, this is why it's paler. Or they're gonna catch some mistake I made or something. They're like, well, I don't know, that whiskey didn't go all the way up to the two but ounce it, line or something, I don't know. But look at the two, uh, with the quote unquote bad foam. The one on your left. Do you want me to, do you want me to like? We'll put them back here. We'll like put them forward so we can. The one on your right looks like it's got a more yellow foam than the one on the left. Oh, I can't really tell from this vantage point the difference, honestly. I will say that uh, this reverse dry shakes actually settled out to less foam than all of them. So, you know, I gotta say that the extra aeration and then the straining through the strainers gave you a much more stable foam. And the people who said you break up the bubbles by putting it through a strainer, which I gotta tell you, I was dubious of that comment, it's actually true. Um, and then also, as you can see, when I sipped here, you see that indent where my mouth is. There's not so much an indent there, right? So which means that this foam is actually more stable. Um, and this foam is probably the same if I just draw a little. Yeah, that foam is probably, yeah, it's the same. You do get a more stable foam. So my takeaway is this. The reverse dry shake definitely gives you a better, a better, more stable foam. It is an extra step though. And so the question is, what's your preference? Do you want something that is a little bit more stable, but takes longer to make? Or do you want something that is comparable, that takes less time to make? That's a preference. It's preference. Yeah. It all boils down to preference. So really, all that shaking and my sore, sore arms, is a complete waste of time. I guess this, is, this has been, you know, useful in some way. Yeah. Cool, all right. Well, this has been Barfly Free Pour. Hope you guys really liked our reverse dry shake part, duh. All of you guys in the comments have been vindicated and all of the uh, good advice that I was given turned out to be true and good advice. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you for setting me straight, uh, internet mind, and I will see you guys on another time. If you like this channel, please hit like, hit subscribe, check us out on Patreon, YouTube memberships, and we also have Instagram. We also have a Twitter that we barely use, but we're there if you want to sub us there. And uh, what else we got? Other than Patreon, website. Twitter. Oh, we got our website and you got a virtual bottle program, theeducatedbarfly.com, where you can buy us a bottle and get your name shouted out. You know what I'm saying? All right, see you guys another time.